What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the brand new version of Blender version 3.6. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so with this new version, first off, we've got a new splash screen that comes from the next Blender open movie that they're currently working on, Pet Projects. Remember that if you do subscribe to Blender Studio, you can download the example files, um, different animations, other things like that, and get up updates on um, the movie as it's being created. So um, you can definitely check that out if you want to. Um, I can link to the Blender Studio in the notes down below. But there is a bunch of different things in here that you can get access to um, if you're trying to reverse engineer any of this stuff or um, if you just want to learn a little bit more about the way that they're creating those movies. So. We've got a new splash screen and we've got a number of different new features in here. There's actually a short video here, which runs through them really quickly, as well as a longer video, which runs you through things in more detail. But I thought we'd just take a quick look at kind of the overall. So I would say easily the biggest thing in the 3.6 release is the fact that they have released support for simulation nodes as a part of geometry nodes. This is super important because basically what it does is it gives us the ability to um, do simulations over time using geometry nodes. And so this is one of the example files that you can download in order to check this out and see how it works. But basically what it is, is this is all being generated with geometry nodes. Well, notice how now we have the ability to actually affect this based on this attractor location. So what's happening is the geometry nodes are generating all of these particles, but then it's being simulated over time, which means we can now create these awesome new geometry node simulations. And so there are a number of cool example files that you can download, like this one, for example, basically creates smoke puffs in real time based on wherever you draw a curve in the 3D space. So notice how you can use this in order to do simulations of a bunch of different things. But this is gonna be super powerful for what we can generate moving forward. But there's already some crazy examples of some things people are doing. Like for example, this um, is basically a version of the donut where you can actually like live add icing to the surface. Um, you've also got options in here for different like moving strings um, based on actually being able to move the different parts and pieces in here. People are already doing amazing things with simulation nodes and it's just going to get better long term. Um, it is generally a good idea to check out just hashtag geometry nodes on Twitter because there's always cool stuff coming out with geometry nodes. So we've also got some performance improvements and cycles. Um, basically what this is, is it's just a lot better at loading large geometries into cycles, um, meaning that loading some of these different objects can be significantly faster um, when switching to rendered view inside of Blender. So better performance is is always something that uh, I'm interested to see. I think a lot of people are. Um, they've also added additional support for AMD hardware. So if you're running one of these AMD cards, um, things could be running a little bit faster for you. Um, note that there's some different uh, different performance benchmarks over here to the right-hand side that you can check out. And they've also added some support for some other GPUs in here as well. So for those of you that do complex UV editing, there's also been improvements to the way that UVs are packed, um, which is going to give you better performance. It's also got some additional tools in here that allow you to set the shape of the UV packing um, so that you can set this up the way that you want it to be. There's some additional tools in here as well. I don't do a ton of complex UV editing, but if you are looking for some more information, you can definitely check out the manual, which is going to talk a little bit more about the way that's going to work. So if you do any kind of character work, um, either just for fun, for learning, or um, actually for any other use, um, they've also provided this new asset library. Library. Um, it's basically a bundle of human base meshes that you can use for sculpting or animation, really anything that you want. So you can actually download this and you can do whatever you want with this. So even if you're just looking to practice, um, you can download and you can use this, but these also are provided under the public domain, meaning you can really do whatever you want with them, right? So you could add clothes to them, you can sculpt on them, you can really do whatever you want, which um, just, being a, just being provided meshes 
size like this for free is super cool. It's one of the cool things about the Blender Foundation in general. It's just how generous they are in providing different things like this in order to help the uh, the community of people using Blender. All right, so this next piece, I'm not 100% sure I'm fully understanding, um, but you've got this new parent space mode, which basically allows you to um, move child objects using the coordinates of their parents. So when I look at the release notes, um, this talks about aligning child objects and armature bones to the parent space. Um, but again, I'm just not 100% sure that I'm understanding the way that this one works. So if anyone knows how that one works, leave a comment below and let me know. I'd be really interested to see. I have a feeling that it's going to be super valuable, but I'm not 100% clear on how to use that one just yet. There's a ton of other animation stuff that they added as well, which you can also check out in the release notes. So um, you can kind of scroll through and there's some different information about this. Um, there's a bunch of different changes and adjustments that have happened to the animation settings. And so I guess as kind of a note, um, there is also a release notes on the Blender Wiki that talks through all of this in more detail, right? So it talks about like the changes that have happened uh, with the, there's some additional add-ons that are now in here as well. Um, so if you want to check those out, you can check that out in here. So if you want more information on how all of this works, um, you can check that out in the release notes, which I will link to down below the page. And then as always, there's a ton of additional stuff that happened down below. So things like less memory usage and large geometries, um, other things like that. There's a ton of improvements going on kind of behind the scenes or under the hood going on as well. So this is definitely worth, um, this is definitely worth taking a pass through as well. Um, the Blender Foundation is um, and has always been honestly hard at work trying to make Blender a lot better. All right, so to me personally, I think the big change in here is gonna be the simulation nodes, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new version? Is there anything you're excited about? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.